Greetings everyone! I hope you're doing well and having fun. Today I would like to talk about one of the biggest misconceptions about Active Directory Database. You might know that Active Directory uses JET Database for storing information and it supports replication and multi-master technology. Uh, so here's the misconception. A lot of people think that just because Active Directory uses a multi-master technology, the size of the NTDS database should be the same on all domain controllers, which is not true at all. Actually, it can be the same, but it is not necessarily true that it must be the same. Sounds confusing, right? I know, but I will cover the reasons behind this in this video, so stay with me and I hope you enjoy this video. So, here's the main question. When you are working on your Active Directory infrastructure, you probably gonna have some sort of domain controllers, actually uh, many domain controllers maybe. Uh, and and domain controllers, there are databases. And what is a database of Active Directory? The database is just a simple file which is called ntds.dit. That's just a simple file. Yeah, that's the Active Directory database. And in that case, if you take a look at the properties of this file, you might see that the size of the database, for example, is something like 32 megabytes. But here's the problem. When you have more domain controllers in your environment, uh, actually, if you take a look at the properties of all those domain controllers, I mean the NTDS file of all those domain controllers, they are not necessarily the same. I mean the size probably gonna be the different than the first one. So you might ask yourself why this is something like that. If my Active Directory is constantly replicating all the information within each of the instance of Active Directory database and each domain controller, so why it shouldn't be the same? if every other information is simply stored on all domain controllers, why the size is different. So this is a misconception. Actually, if you take a look at the left, you see that this is uh, the first picture uh, is about ntds.dit file of one of the domain controllers in my environment, which you can see uh, 396 megabyte. And and then on another domain controller, you probably see that is going to be the different, which my case is the same. You can see in another domain controller, it is 410 megabytes in the size, and they are completely different. So, this is not an error, this is not the problem, this is by the nature of Active Directory. And it, it's not about the nature of Active Directory, it's the nature of databases, it's the nature of uh, operating system. It has nothing to do with Active Directory. So, what are the reasons behind this? Why this can happen? This can happen for a variety of reasons. I'm going to cover some of the reasons, some of the common reasons for that. The first reason uh, is actually something called, what I call actually, uh, local values. So before going through the local values, let me give you an image. Uh, as you can see in this image, we have a property, we have the properties of the user account in our Active Directory database. So, and Within the properties of Active Directory user, you will see that there is a famous tab which is called Attribute Editor. And this Attribute Editor actually shows all the information which is stored for our user account. As you can see, there are different type of uh, attributes here, which you can see language, language code, last logon, as you can see, the time, last logon time is tab, and uh, logon count, lockout time, and things like that. Let's move on. It's just, it was just something as a, as a reminder. So, uh, in Active Directory, there is an attribute which is called last logon. So, how this can help in understanding the reasons behind uh, this uh, type of behavior of different size in Active Directory database. So, last logon is actually an attribute which is going to store the last time a user account was authenticated. Uh, within Active Directory. So let me give you an example of that. Let's consider there is a user account who wants to log into the workstation. Uh, if he wants to log into the workstation, actually, he should decide of the domain controllers who will authenticate him. And I'm not going to cover uh, things and concepts behind DC locator process. This is something completely different. Uh, once the user has actually selected the domain controller who is responsible for authenticating the user, the authentication will send to the domain controller. In this example, we think that the domain controller on the left is selected. So when the domain controller actually 
uh, receive the authentication, it will do uh, the process and it will find out if the user is authorized, if the password is correct and everything is like that. And at the end, the user will be logged into the workstation. If the, uh, actually the login was successful, the time that the user was authenticated by domain controller will be stored in an attribute called last logon. So actually the last logon is going to have the last time the user was authenticated by that uh, domain control. So what about the domain control on the right? We have to say that the last logon attribute also exists on domain control on the right and also exists on all sort of domain control, all the different domain controllers. But the problem is since the domain controllers on the right have not uh, authenticated the user account it doesn't have information about the last logon attribute so it will be null it will be nothing and in that case uh, domain controller on the left is going to have more information than the domain controller on the right which basically means this domain controller is going to store more information on the database and this is one of the reasons why we see that the size of the domain controllers are different the second reason behind this behavior is something called fragmentation so what do you mean by fragmentation? Uh, as we said, Active Directory is a database and again the database is a, is a file which is called ntds.dit. Okay, sounds fair enough. But let's take a look at the database from inside and how it is stored. This is a picture, as you can see, this is a picture of the uh, hard drive. Your hard disk drive is going to have something like this. There's going to be different parts within your hard drive. We have platters, we have tracks, we have sectors. But the point is, whenever we want to store information on our Active Directory database, the information will be stored on hard disk. And when we want to store information on hard disk, it should be written which is on something which is called blocks. So blocks are really, really small part of the uh, hard disk that can be utilized in order to store information on our database, on our file, on our hard drive. Let's consider it as a block. The, as you can see, these are some sort of blocks which we're going to eventually use it in order to store information. When we create a user account in our Active Directory infrastructure, we have to uh, actually present some sort of information like uh, things like for example SAM account name, password, department, des description and things like that. And when we want to store and create this information, a process which is an internal process of Active Directory will happen and eventually all the information which we uh, converted to bits. And once everything is converted to bits, we can store it into the database, we can store it into the hard disk and eventually we can store it on our blocks. So these bits will be sent in order to be saved on blocks of our hard disk. And as you can see, this information is stored onto the database and onto the hard drive, which is green. So what happens when we delete a user account? When we delete a user account, the user account is deleted. Again, I'm not going to cover uh, advanced topic like uh, garbage collection and things like that. Uh, this is uh, some example. Let's consider that the user account is deleted. Once the user account is deleted, it's okay. It's deleted. What, what happens to the space that was reserved for this user account? The user account is deleted and deleted from the disk. But this space is not going to be available. It will be unavailable. So what do you mean by that? It means that whenever, again, we want to create a user account, the user account, in order to be stored on the database and on hard drive, it should use available space in order to get saved into the disk. And what is available space? The available space will going to start from here, not the yellow one. So again, this will be converted to the bits and will be stored on an available database, on an available space of our database. And that's this. And by the time when we create and delete resources in our Active Directory, uh, the block and the database will look like something like this. So in this case, as you can see, uh, the status of our hard drive is not looking very good. We have much more unavailable spaces which should be removed in that case. In order to remove all these uh, unavailable spaces, a process which is called defragmentation should be run. 
on the database and on the hard drive actually. What is this process? This process will actually go through all the files, all the blocks and will try to remove all those unavailable spaces. So again, these unavailable spaces will be removed from the hard drive. So again, we're not done yet. Why? Because again, when we want to create a new user account, the user account cannot simply use these white spaces as you can see in the picture because whenever we want to save something into the disk, everything should be connected to each other, not uh, for example one block over there, two blocks over here. This is not acceptable. Everything should be connected to each other. So in that case, available spaces which you can see in this picture, which is white, is not going to be used again. But on the second phase of the defragmentation, the process will go through these white spaces and green spaces and available spaces, of course. And these green spaces, by the second phase of the defragmentation, will try to place next to each other. And like that. And again, in that case, our available spaces will be placed next to each other. So when we create a new user account, the new uh, available space uh, will be simply chosen right after the uh, green spaces which is uh, reserved space and that's what happens these two phases are done together like uh, firstly remove all the unavailable spaces and again regain all those available spaces so simply there are one process but I try to explain it in two different process in order to make you understand if you want to learn more about this, uh, you have to take a look at the Information Retrieval, Data Structure and Algorithm. This is some heavy book. If you want to take a look at this, uh, you should really uh, a deep dive into the book if you want to understand how everything works in uh, data structure and algorithms of saving and storing information on your database. However, uh, I tried to read the Persian version, which was quite more difficult to understand. But if you want, you can try the left one, which is English version. Anyway, the third reason is quite easy to understand. It is called global catalog. So what do you mean by that in our behavior, in our example? Let's consider that we have a domain which is called contoso.com and in the domain we have two domain controllers. The domain controllers actually use something called partitions in order to replicate information to each other. So we have different type of partitions in Active Directory. I'm going to cover some of them here. Uh, the first partition is something called domain partition. DP stands for domain partition and this is the partition that actually stores all information about the domain which means that the user accounts, the password, the computer accounts, uh, uh, the security groups and things like that. These are all stored in domain partition. So how this can help in order to synchronize and replicate information. Let's suppose that we have a user account on the domain controller on the left. If the domain controller on the left wants to replicate the information to the uh, domain controller on the right, it should actually initiate the replication and inform the domain controller about the change. How does this happen? By using domain partition, which is called domcontoso.com in this case. As you can see in this picture, the, the user account on the left will be replicated by using and utilizing the domain partition, which is called contoso.com. And again, in that case, the synchronization will trigger and the user account will be replicated to domain controller on the right. The next partition, which is called application partition. Application partitions are normally used in order to store DNS information. If you're having DNS in your, uh, of course you have DNS, but if your DNS servers are holding zones which are Active Directory integrated, uh, the information of those zones will be stored on application partition. I'm not going to cover every single things about application partition here here but if you want to read more about that you have to go through technet and sites like that in order to understand the third partition is called schema partition sp stands for schema partition this is a partition and actually uh, you can find on all domain controllers in your files but the problem is this partition is completely uh, read only you can't write on that unless you're working on a schema master role the fourth partition is something called configuration partition. CP stands for configuration partition. This configuration partition is actually stored on all domain controllers. And again, it is read only by all domain controllers unless you're working on your root domain. So these are the four most common partitions of Active Directory and Active Directory database. So how those can help? 
When the domain controller wants to replicate information to each other, you use, they use this type of uh, partitions in order to replicate information. From the domain controller, as we can see in this picture, there are two domain controllers for Contoso.com. We have four partitions on each domain controller. But the point is, when we introduce a global catalog into our domain actually environment, things are going to be a little different. Global catalogs not only hold all those four partitions that we discussed earlier, they will also hold more partitions. But I'm going to say which partitions. Okay, if you have two domain and more or more domain in your forest, uh, like nwtraders.is on the left and mhd.ir on the right, for each domain in the forest, the global catalog server will hold a partition. For example, the global catalog on contest.com will hold the information for uh, nwtraders.is, which is a domain on the left. And in that partition, it will store information about all user objects, all computer objects, and actually all sort of the objects in that domain. And this process will happen again for the domain on the right which means that the global catalog of the contest.com will again hold a partition for mhd.ir and in that mhd.ir partition it's going to have all information about uh, all objects of the mhd.ir domain. I forgot to say something that not all information is stored on global catalog partition. There are some uh, attributes which are uh, basically selected by using a feature which is called PAS, Partial Attribute Set, and those attributes will be stored only on the global catalog partition of the global catalog server. So again, as you can see in the picture, two domain controllers on the bottom of the picture, they have four partitions only, but the domain controller which holds the global catalog server is actually have six partitions. So it means that the global catalog server will actually use more spaces in order to save all those information into the database. And in the database, I mean ntds.dit. And that is the third reason that we can say is responsible for uh, different size of ntds.dit files. And that's all. Yes. I tried to explain three main reasons behind this behavior that you can find in your Active Directory databases and their size. Uh, these are the main reasons behind this. If you know any other reason, make sure to leave that in the comment below. And also, make sure that you subscribe to my channel because more videos will be coming every other week. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Have fun.